Well, hi everyone and welcome back to our weekly Bible study here at King's Revival Church International. I'm Gareth and I will be sharing this week's lesson with you. Well, um, we are continuing along the lines of faith. Last week I shared um, the first two points. This week I'm going to share the last two points. So the title of um, this message is Persistent Faith your faith our faith and god's faith hallelujah last week just to recap on just for a few minutes and then i'm going to share um the next two points with you but before i do so i just want to welcome each and every one of you yeah at the um, bible study if this is your first time while well, you are our important guest it's so great to have you with us on this uh, broadcast and uh, I know that God is going to bless you. He's a good God, He's a loving Father and He has a great plan for your life. So stay tuned at the end of this teaching. I'm going to pray for you. We're going to trust God for a miracle in your life. That thing that you're trusting for, while well, I believe now faith is. Now faith is. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the time for your miracle. Faith is for today. Hallelujah. Faith is change. Faith wants to happen for you now. And I believe that um, at the end of this message, I'm going to uh, preach for 25 minutes or so, and then I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to put my faith with yours, and we're going to trust God for great things. Well, so last week, we looked at persistent faith, and we looked at the your kind of faith. So the persistent faith, we looked at the, the widowed woman who came to the judge, and she said, she says to the, to the judge, give me justice. And the judge was like, no, get away from me. Um, I don't fear God. I don't fear man. I don't have time for you. Get away. And so what this woman did was she didn't go home all depressed, all sad, all dejected and rejected, broken, busted and disgusted. That's not what she did. She went home and she prayed. She prayed. Hallelujah to her God. She comes back. She says to the judge, give me my justice. No, get away from me, woman. She goes home. She's not broken, busted and disgusted. She goes in her prayer closet. She's praying, praying, praying. She comes back. Give me justice. No, she goes home. She prays, she prays. She comes back. And the Bible says that eventually this, this judge... He was like asking himself, what kind of a woman is this? She doesn't give up. This woman's going to tire me out. Um, I better just give her uh, what she is asking for. And in verse 4 of, of Luke 18, we see that it, it says there, for a while he refused. For a while the judge refused. And I want to tell you, whatever you're going through in your life, only for a while will you have to endure. Only for a while will you be sick. Only for a while will you be poor. Only for a while will you have no job. Only for a while will you be going through that struggle. Only for a while. Because you know what? When you stay in prayer, when you stay in faith, when you don't give up, your answer is going to come speedily as Jesus was telling us. In this parable so the first kind of faith characteristic of faith that we're looking at is the persistence there's got to be a persistence within your uh, faith walk and your prayer life you've got to keep trusting God no matter what you see in the natural no matter what you feel no matter what you see no matter what you're going through the word supersedes what's happening in the natural God has the final say. Come on. He's the, the God most high. You are seated in heavenly places. We've got the final say. The enemy is defeated. He's under our feet. We have the victory. Jesus has won the victory at the cross. Come on. 
He's won the victory at the cross. The devil is under our feet. You are victorious. The blood will speak for you. The blood will cry out for you. Jesus has broken the power of the enemy and has given you authority, influence, and power in Jesus' name. God is not waiting for, for um, oh, in, in, let me put it this way. God is looking for a person who will take faith and who will be bold and walk in that boldness. Um, he's looking for that kind of person. And which is my second faith that I spoke about last week is your, the your kind of faith. When you look at the woman with the issue of blood, she applied certain principles. And she, when she took, the Bible says when she took the hem of the garment of Jesus, Power went out and then Jesus turned around and said, hey, who touched me? He didn't even know who, who, who draw the power out of him. In other words, Jesus wasn't even ready for this woman's faith. But, but heaven has to answer to your faith. Heaven responds to your faith. Jesus responds to your faith even when he's not ready for it. When Jesus was on was with the people, he didn't know who touched him. He wasn't ready, but the woman still took it. And so Jesus is looking for a, a person that will, will be radical, that will believe great things, that will walk in the supernatural and believe God for the miraculous. Hallelujah. So this woman she, it was, and then when Jesus uh, uh, eventually saw this woman, um, she said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Not God's faith, not my faith. He says, your faith has made you well. So that's another um, facet of faith that we're looking at. So we're looking at four different types of faith, four Type four different characteristics of faith. Um, we're looking at a different angle of how faith works. Hallelujah. So there's, there's the persistent faith. So Jesus, he says, listen, when I come back, am I going to see this faith when I come back? Because this is a rare faith. This woman, not everyone is like this woman. Most people give up on day one. Most people turn their back when it gets tough. Not this woman. I want a, a, a man or woman who can, who can walk and talk like the, this widowed woman. Then he says, the your kind of faith, which comes from you applying certain principles in your life, you'll get the result. That's your faith. All right. Now, number three is, so what's the title of the message? Persistent faith. Your faith, our faith, God's faith. Now we're looking at our faith. What is this our faith about? Well, look at Matthew chapter 18 and verse 18 to 20. Once again, Jesus is teaching his disciples. Um, he's, he's, he's empowering them. He's teaching them. Jesus was a teacher and a preacher. Hallelujah. Um, and look what he says in, in verse 18. Truly... I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So, so first of all, he says, I'm, I've given you some keys. I've given you some authority. You have authority in this place. You have authority here on earth. Make sure that you exercise your authority. Then he says in verse 19, again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. If how many of you? If two of you agree. So, so what kind of faith are we talking about here? It's the our kind of faith. If, if two of you agree. Okay. So our kind of faith is unique because it operates in numbers. Hallelujah. Together is better. So two or more, preferably more, the more the more powerful. Hallelujah. Um, the our kind of faith doesn't work in isolation. This is a different facet now. We're looking at a different dynamic of faith. Remember, the persistent faith, it was up to that woman. The your kind of faith, it worked with the woman. This kind of faith is because um, of the people 
that is around us. It is the connection that we have with believers that activates this kind of faith. So for this kind of faith to be released, we need a few things. Well, what do we need? Number one, we need more than one person. Number two, we need someone that will believe like you. You need someone who has the same kind of faith as you in the sense that they won't doubt when you bring up a radical request. Hallelujah. You see, this is not me bringing my, 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 the thing that I'm expecting. And when I connect with you, you better have that faith that I have. You need to say yes and amen with me when I, so you can't just go to anyone. You need someone that has a, that has a level of faith that will, that will believe great things. You see, not everyone can believe for great things. Because they haven't exercised their faith. Not because they don't have faith, but because they don't have that level of faith as you have. So be careful who you connect with in prayer. When you say, hey brother, sister, I need, I need prayer. Please, let's pray together. Well, you need to go to uh, Pastor Philip. You need to go to your pastor. You need to go to that strong leader. If you trust in God for, for, for big things and you, and you want someone that's going to agree with you. You want someone that's going to, that you, when your faith connects, there's, there's exponential power that takes place. And the, the, the great thing about this is, if you look at that verse 19, he says, if you agree in anything, anything. So here's the thing, you know, we usually put the limits on God, but this verse says, hey, I'm not putting any limits on you. We're the ones that put the limits on ourselves. Hallelujah. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. The power is in the connection of faith. Faith is released because of the connection. So I want to encourage husband and wife. Nothing is impossible for you. Come on. When you, when as a husband and wife, when you're praying as a power team, as a power couple, you trusting your, for, for breakthrough in your family, in your personal life, in your business, in your career, you know, in your home, whatever, for your children. When you come together in prayer and in faith, with the same faith, agreeing, saying yes and amen, you're going to see great things happen in and through your life. Intercessors. When we have the intercessors of the church come together and they're praying up a storm, they're putting their faith together, trusting for great deliverance, great services, powerful um, miracles, powerful preaching, praying for the ministry, praying for people, praying for needs. When they come in together and they, they're praying corporately, something happens there's there's another dimension when we connect our faith together you know um a few weeks ago i preached about the seven keys for revival and one of the keys was fellowship um when you look in acts chapter 2 verse 1 the bible says they they were all with one accord in one place in 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 one house and then the holy spirit was poured out in that place jesus says go to jerusalem be together pray there wait for me there and i'm going to send the holy ghost well you know what i believe that if there was division in that place i don't think the holy spirit would, would have been poured out no they had to be in one place they had to be in one accord there had to be a oneness there had to be unity and as a result of that unity Bam! The, in a mighty rushing wind, the Holy Ghost was poured o over the early church. <coughs> Excuse me. You see, the Holy Spirit was never intended for one person. The power of God is never intended for one person. The, it's, it's for the church. It's for all of us. It's for the whole church. And so when we come together at church, there's a different dynamic when we place our faith together and we trust in God for great things. You know, if, if, if Pastor Dill is preaching, he might preach a word that changes your life. He might preach a word that, that changes your, your, your destiny. And that word is for you and it can be for a few people in that place. Now, maybe I come and I pray and you come up to me and you say something to me and it's going to encourage me. 
It's going to um, bless me. And so when we're together corporately, there is a different atmosphere. And I especially if our faith, the, the, the place is faith filled. There's an expectation there. there, there the, the, the place, the anointing is different because we're, we're, we're God's people coming together in unity. And now, according to the scripture, where two come together and agree anything is possible hallelujah praise the lord and so yeah we see the our kind of faith there there's the faith there, there's the faith where you need to be persistent in your in your home in your prayer life in your you know devotion and when you're in the word of god you've got to be persistent trusting god for that particular thing and then there's the your faith where you're applying certain principles that's that's individual that's up to you but when we come together there is a there's a combination there's a your part and there's a my part and when we put our parts together there's a whole part and there's a power explosion you see that's the our kind of faith the our kind of faith doesn't work at home when you're alone amen it's a different dynamic that happens when we come together and that's the our kind of faith hallelujah praise the lord so the power is in the connection of faith faith is released because of the connection and we're the church hallelujah there's power in the church the church will, 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 will move forward. The gates of hell ha, ha, will not prevail. Hallelujah. So, number one is we have persistent faith. Never giving up. Number two, we have your faith. Daughter, your faith. Not my faith. Not Jesus' faith. Because Jesus wasn't even ready for it. He says, your faith has made you well. Then, in Matthew 18, we see that our faith. There is a different dynamic. When we come together at church, there is a different dynamic when we, when we connect. The disciples were sent out two by two. One will put a thousand to flight, two will put ten thousand to flight. Corporately, there is a, a, a different anointing, if I can say it like that. A, a, a multiplied anointing. Hallelujah. It doesn't happen on its own. Being on your own and praying is, I'm not saying it's not powerful. It's, it's powerful. It's incredibly powerful. Not, it's, it's unlimited. But it's a different facet. I'm, I'm looking at different, different um, characteristics of faith that is going to encourage you. And so, so at the end of this, you can say, hey, you know what? I can, I can pray and I can keep trusting. I, you know what? I can, I can ap apply principles of faith. Hey, when I come to church, I'm excited because now, now we're going to multiply this thing. Hallelujah. So we, we've got these, these, these different aspects available to us as Christians. To, to, you know, we, in other words, we don't have an excuse. Hallelujah. We don't have an excuse to walk in faith. We don't have an excuse as to why we're not walking in victory and seeing the miracles it's not because of god it must be because somewhere we're not utilizing what we have jesus has finished it at the cross he's not he's he's not he's he's looking for someone that will that will walk in and take hallelujah praise the lord and then the fourth one is the god kind of faith is God's faith. And there, turn with me to Mark chapter 11, and we'll look at verse 12 and 14, and then 20 to 24. So, yeah, Jesus was with his disciples. He wanted to get um, some fruit from the fig tree. There was no fruit. And so Jesus spoke to the fruit. He said, no one will eat of you ever again. The next day, Pete, the disciples walk past that tree, and the tree is dead. And Peter's like, wow, Jesus this tree that you spoke to yesterday, now it's gone. It's shriveled up. And so Jesus says, how does it respond? Listen to what he says. He says, I'll read from verse 20. As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. Verse 21. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Has withered. Verse 22. And Jesus answered them, have faith in God. He says, have faith 
in God. Well, hang on. Jesus was, 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 was talking to the tree. Now they wanted, the disciples want to know, well, how did you do that, Jesus? Now Jesus, he first says, he answers them by saying, well, you, know how, you want to know how to do that? Okay, this is how you do that. Have faith in God. So Jesus addresses their faith. But here's the thing. Whenever I read this, I thought it was like, I need to put my faith in Jesus. I need to do certain things and put it. But now I read it differently. I was like, Jesus says, no, have faith in God. So it's, it's me being in Christ and Christ is in me. I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. In John chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus says, abide in me. And if my abi words abide in you, ask anything and it will be done. You see, this is about being in him and moving with him. It's about God doing something through me as I'm in him. We're doing it together. I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by Him. His words are in me. I am in Him. We are one. And now, and, and so that's how Jesus could speak to that tree. He says, because of my relationship, we're doing it through my connection with Jesus. You see, what is the difference between the your faith and the God's faith? Yes, the difference is relationship. The God's faith is you're doing things because of your connection, your relationship with God. You know what? The woman with the issue of blood wasn't born again. Hallelujah. I'll say that again. The woman with the issue of blood wasn't born again, yet she received a miracle. Once she received a miracle, I think she became born again and then was a follower of Jesus. But before that, she applied principles of faith and then jesus said your faith has made you well you see the woman mis uh, misplaced her faith in the beginning she put her faith in the physicians she put her money she had money she put her faith in the money to put in the physicians and then when everything ran out and she didn't know what else to do then she heard about jesus and then she placed her faith in jesus but she wasn't born again yet but she applied certain principles. When you apply certain principles, you will get a result. And so, you know, when it comes to the gospel, you need to remember there are two parts of the gospel. There's the person of Jesus, and then there's the principles of Jesus. You see, the person of Jesus creates your peace. The principles of Jesus creates your prosperity. The person of Jesus prepares you for eternity. The principles of Jesus prepares you for the now, prepares you for earth. So this woman who operated in the your kind of faith, she was operating in the principles of Jesus. Remember, she didn't have peace, but she applied certain things and she got her miracle. Those, that was the principles. The God kind of faith is working through the person of Jesus. You have the peace. You have the relationship and now we're, we're working together. Hallelujah. And then this woman, what was interesting when you, when you carry on with uh, the scripture in verse 23, let's look at and see what it says. Jesus says, okay, you must have faith in God. So now when you're, when you're in God, when you're in relationship to, with him and you one with him, then what you need to do is he says, he explains. Verse 23, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that he that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be done yours. So he first says, listen, if you're in relationship with him, if you his words are in you, if because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the words of God, if you're in him, he's in you, you are born again, you are in a relationship, you are in the word, then ask what you want and it's going to be done. So yeah, he says the first first step is be in him. Be born again. Be filled with his words. And when you start to speak with his power, you're going to get a result. Hallelujah. And it's interesting that the woman with the issue of blood, she had to speak 
That was one of the keys. So, so she had to speak. So yeah, Jesus is actually talking about the two kinds of faith. He's talking about the your kind of faith, but now he's talking about the God's kind of faith. He says, you've got to do certain things, but first and foremost, you've got to be in Him. You've got to be connected to Him. His words have got to be alive in you. And when you're operating like that, well, that is very, very powerful. So your words are powerful. Through the power of the spoken word, you create and release the presence of Jesus Christ. Gareth, what are you saying? Well, in Romans 10.10, 10, listen to what it says. This is very powerful. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation so wow a miracle takes place when i speak the words of jesus christ when i believe in my heart that jesus is lord and i confess it with my mouth bam salvation takes place your confession of faith in jesus creates salvation but here's the thing you don't go up um, to heaven and now you're going to fetch jesus and you're going to bring jesus down to to earth to receive salvations no your words in your heart and in your mouth brings his presence hallelujah your words brings the presence of jesus christ so where is jesus christ in this process what is his address um it's not high up in the sky or below the ground no jesus is in his word come on somebody jesus is in, is in his word where are these words that bring salvation these words are in your mouth and in your heart. Jesus is bound to what you speak forth. You release the power of Jesus through the spoken word and you create the presence of Jesus Christ through your words. And now you have the responsibility of carrying the presence of Jesus Christ. It's your responsibility to create the presence of Jesus Christ wherever you go. To release Jesus and to meet specific needs is what you and I must do. You see, it's, it's you have to say it. God can't say it for you. You got to say it. And you know, I was listening to a preacher last week and he said this, and I thought it was so, so good. Basic, but good. Profound. He says, you get what you preach. Hallelujah. You get what you preach. In other words, if you preach healing, you get healing, miracle, healing will, will show up in your church. If you preach miracles, well, miracles is going to show up in your church. If you preach discipleship, guess what? Discipleship is going to show up in your church. It, what you speak is what you get. What you preach is is what's going to manifest. You, you preach the supernatural, there's going to be supernatural flow uh, in a matter of time. You, you're talking about finances, you're preaching on finances, you're teaching on finances, guess what? That's what will show up after a matter of time. So you get what you preach. You, what you're saying, you, you release the presence of Jesus Christ through your words and so the question is is what are you saying what are you speaking what are you releasing but i want to encourage you four types of faith four ways that our faith works number one we have the persistent faith if you're persistent you will get your answers only for a while if you can endure the only for a while part you're going to get incredibly incredible breakthrough most people give up when it's tough it's it's one thing to have faith for today but do you have faith for tomorrow are you exercising your faith every day because that kind of person nothing is impossible for that person so one thing that you can do is be persistent one thing that you can do is stay in prayer if you can do that you'll be a man of miracles a woman of miracles so the first kind of faith is persistent faith the second kind of faith is the your kind of faith. Jesus said to the woman, daughter, your faith has made you well. Not my faith, not God's faith, not Jesus's faith. Your faith, the your kind of faith has made you well. You applied certain things. And it, you know, it's, it's amazing. People in the world know how to operate in, in faith. They, they're not even born again, but they're operating in the your kind of faith because they've tapped into the principles of Jesus. You see, I, I mentioned there's a difference between the principles and the person. 
The principles of Jesus is when you apply certain things, you get a result. The person of Jesus is all about relationship. And that's where you get your peace. You see, you can have people in the world operating the principles, but they don't have peace because they don't have Jesus. You can get results, but you're lacking peace. But the, your kind of faith is applying certain principles, which we need to be doing. But we have both. We have the your kind of faith and we have the God kind of faith. So number one, persistent faith. Number two, your faith. Number three is our faith. Something incredibly powerful happens when we, when we come in connection. The, the, the our faith is released through our connection. When we're in corporate, when we're in church, when there's a, when there, you can sense when you step into a church and the people are hungry for the word, where people are expecting a miracle, you sense that in the atmosphere and it charges it up. And there's an atmosphere of faith that you cannot get on your own when you're at home. You see, it's a different dynamic of faith. When you're alone and when you're with people, it's different. Do not forsake the gathering of the saints. Persistent faith, your faith, our faith, and then the God kind of faith. God's faith. Well, Jesus says you can walk in that. If you abide in Him and His words abide in you, it's relationship. When you're in Him and you're spending time in His word, when you're spending time in His prayer, now as you speak, you release the presence of Jesus Christ. Now when you go forth, it's, it's not you exp you're waiting on God to do something for you. No, God is going to do something through you because of your relationship within Him. He, uh, Jesus says to the disciples, have faith in God, <laughs> be in him and then move and see what's going to happen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so excited today. This has really charged me up. I'm excited. I'm encouraged. And I want to pray for you before you go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for miracles now. I thank you for healing miracles to flow. Those that are trusting you now for healing, I pray healing, healing to flow through your body, healing to throw, flow through your life. Touch, touch each one now, Lord. Heal them now, Father. Heal them now in the mighty name of Jesus. He's meeting you there. He's meeting you there. He's in your home. He's in your house. He's healing you now of that infirmity. Every sickness is going in Jesus' name. He's delivering you of every stronghold. He's delivering you now of every sickness, pain, every, every addiction. He's leaving your house. He's leaving your home. Leaving you. Leaving you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you for blessing our families. Thank you for blessing our homes, our relationships, our marriages, our, our families, our children. In Jesus' name, peace into your home, peace into your life, joy to fill your heart, everlasting. And we thank you, Lord, that you are a good God. Thank you that we can keep coming to you boldly to the throne of grace where we will find help in the time of our need. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Well, church, God bless you. Thank you for um, being with me today. I really appreciate you. I love you. I thank God for you. We pray for you. And um, I'm looking forward to powerful uh, services this weekend. Remember, Pastor Deal always brings a fresh, fresh message. And also, there'll be a local pastor preaching at the various services, the multiple services that we have. So make sure you get there and I will see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.